Good morning, everyone. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I'm Lisa Ann Spencer. Welcome. I'm enjoying a cup of coffee early this morning, and I've decided to jump on this collaboration with Ingrid at the Ingrid Chronicles and Kim, the Homeschooling Grammy Curriculum Choices for Science and for Bible. So stay tuned and I'll show you what we use. For those of you who don't know me yet, um, I am a wife of 31 years and a homeschooling mama for 21 years. I have six children two boys, four girls, and actually my oldest daughter is um, homeschooling my two youngest girls. I do still guide them, and of course, um, for the longest I did the curriculum choices, though now my oldest daughter is making some choices of her own for the younger girls. But as this pertains to science, I'll just show you what we've done for all the years that's worked really well for us and that my daughter continues to do with the younger children. Um, number one, we really love Abeka. I used to teach at a private Christian school and that was my first introduction to both Bob Jones and Abeka and I really preferred the Abeka and found that the students really liked it. It was easy to understand. They tried to make it fun and interesting, and we rarely buy new books um, for science. I'll buy used books and then try to find the workbook or test book that goes with it, and if it's out of date and there's no quiz books, test booklets left, that's okay. I just have the girls do the comprehension checks at the end of each chapter, and that's where they get their grade from. Um, in the younger years, like first through eighth grade, basically, um, we hardly do any quizzes. We just do it as a read-through and do some of the experiments. I find that that has worked very well, um, and I am a keep it simple um, kind of homeschooling mama. I feel that you introduce the children to things that might interest them. Uh, if they love it, they'll pursue it themselves. Otherwise, they're just going to learn it for a quiz, forget it, and never think about it again. One of the uh, fun things that we've done for science is we all have a nature journal. This is mine, and this is one of the girls. Each of them have one. We decorated them with fabric just so that each one would be personalized. But once a week, we take our journals, go sit outside, and find a new thing, new plant, new insect, new flower or weed, and draw it and come in then and try to identify it. So another thing that we have done, and let me see if I can find a page and show you. We would have um, boxes that we would draw a box, and so this is the moon box, and we would do um, you know, can you find the moon today and what phase is it in? If not, we would come inside and look up on an almanac app the phase of the moon that day. We had a tree box. Each child would pick a tree and then through the years watch it grow, draw it, um, notice the changes in it through the seasons. And then each time we would have a sky box so you would draw the sky, is it cloudy, is it clear, is it overcast? Then we would come in and write the temperature and the humidity and, and as I said, you know, choose in this day it was a particular weed and you draw it and then come inside and write all these things down and try to identify them. The girls have really learned a lot by doing these. And one of our favorite science activities has been astronomy. And this is an ongoing subject in our household. 
It all began with this book called Signs and Seasons by Jay Ryan. Jay Ryan has a Facebook page called Classical Astronomy. I highly recommend that you look him up. Um, I will try to put links in the description below for um, his, I believe he maintains a website. The book is very user friendly. Um, I learned so much and then I was able to teach this to a co-op class and then we continually teach it to our children. It comes with a workbook that is perfect for a school year. It has lots of activities and um, worksheets and things that you can do um, as a family or like I said as a co-op. And Mr. Ryan, I contacted him and he gave me permission to make reproductions. And in there, some of the activities include making these volvels. Um, this is like star finders and they are so fun and so wonderful to use. So again, I'll include a link in the description below to Mr. Ryan's website. All right, now to my favorite, I save the best for last, of course, is um, Bible. In all my years of homeschooling, like I said, it's been 21 years. I have never purchased a Bible curriculum. I, I think that Bible curriculums are rather, um, not saying that they're not good and they're not useful, but everything seems to distract from like the actual Bible. I find that it's so much better just to train your children in using the Bible with the Bible, a notebook, and a pencil. That's really all that is needed. Teach them to read it for themselves, study it for themselves, and to believe it. Um, that is the goal in Bible study, and also the goal is to get to know Jesus. This is how we get to know the God of the universe that created us. So um, a few of the things that we have done, of course, is as they're learning to read and write, give them reading assignments from the scripture. A uh, new reader, you can sit and read to them or have them read a chapter to you. And I suggest you just go through it chronologically or go through it canonically from Genesis to Revelation. I've also had them, you know, copy passages of scripture um, when they're learning to write, choose a short psalm and have them copy it or some profound passages of scripture that you would like them to memorize or be familiar with. And um, that works beautifully um, and in fact I'm going to be doing a book review there is a book what is it called um, the 1718 series it's about um, learning the Bible by copying the Bible word for word um, copy work may seem rote and mundane but it's actually an excellent learning and teaching tool one of the things that we've done as a family is during the summer when we're not doing other schoolwork, we challenged ourselves with the Read Through the Bible in 90 Days Challenge. You can look that up on the internet and I'll try to post some links below. There's a Read Through It chronolo chronologically and there's Read Through It canonically and it tells you day by day which passages to read and it gives you 90 days to do it. Uh, it's pretty intense. It takes, if you're reading out loud, which is what we did, um, it's going to take one to two hours every day. That's a huge commitment, but it is far more beneficial for your family and yourself than anything else that, that's going to take that much time. You're going to sit and watch a Disney movie and it's going to take you two hours. Instead, you could be reading God's Word. I highly recommend it. So this year, um, I've, been teaching, um, I've been teaching Sunday school uh, ages 4 to 14 for a couple of years. 
and for the most part I've just made my own curriculum the same thing I do with my homeschool children I take the children through the Bible um, teach them to learn to study it for themselves and to read it but we decided to order a curriculum and it's called Growing Up in Grace and it has three book series it progresses through the Bible and canonically and chronologically uh, it gives the children an overview of all the major events but the thing that I love about this curriculum is because it's growing up in grace it is um, viewed through the lens of rightly dividing the word of truth it makes a distinction in the dispensations throughout the Bible it distinguishes when Israel um, is God's chosen people and then the dispensation that we live in today, which is um, the dispensation of the grace of God that was given to Paul. So this is not just good for children, it's also good for adults. I'll, enclose, I'll include a link below to the Growing Up in Grace curriculum. Okay, so hope this has been helpful to someone. Hope it encourages you. Um, if you have any questions or comments, just drop them below. And thank you to Ingrid and over at the Ingrid Chronicles and Kim at the Homeschooling Grammy for hosting this collaboration. I look forward to watching the other videos and I'll see you next time.